Good morning, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a tutorial by request for my friend Christine out in beautiful Panama. She wants to know how to um, paint, draw and paint a rose. So um, I, I'm gonna go through the drawing with you in a minute, but the first thing I'm gonna do is actually uh, put the background into this, on this picture I've already drawn. I'm working on a 140 pound watercolor greeting card. Oops, I had a little, uh, <laughs> a little stray paint on that on my water bucket, I think. All right, so I begin by wetting the paper. Now, so I'm gonna show you how to draw this in a second. So when it comes time to paint, you might wanna go back to the beginning of the video just to see how I put this background in. It's certainly not difficult. All right, I'm gonna go with a little bit of alizarin crimson here. Move my brushes out of the way. Uh, I'm gonna really water it down. I'm gonna put that in the center just to give like, and actually I think I might wanna warm that up a little bit of, um, Oh, a little bit of lemon yellow, I think. I don't want it really orange, but I want kind of that soft peachy pink. So I'm gonna add some of that in there, a little bit there. And that's just gonna fade away. I'm, this is just is gonna dry a lot lighter. So keep that in mind whenever you're using watercolors that it dries lighter. So don't freak out while you're doing your background. I am going around the flower with the, um, with the sap green. I just am toning the paper. Um, I personally really don't like a bright white background on my watercolors, so I like to go ahead and throw some of this color in right off the bat. And to kind of bridge the colors, um, I think I will take a little bit of that lemon yellow and just kind of throw a little bit kind of in there. It'll make my greens pop and it won't do anything crazy to the pinks that I'm gonna throw in later. All right, this is gonna dry a lot lighter. I'm gonna set this aside for now. Um, if your colors aren't blending, you would give it a spritz of water, like I could just go like that. Just try not to create puddles because puddles will give you hard um, areas in your wash. All right, so now uh, for the drawing, I would recommend you get a scrap paper. I just drew with a pencil on my paper, but I'm pretty confident of a drawer, so, um, so I did that, but if you do this on scrap paper, what you can do afterwards is scribble on the back of your paper with a pencil, and then you can lay it down and just draw over your, the lines you like, and that will transfer pencil lines. So that's kind of nice. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I would like you to begin by sketching uh, a circle the size of your flower. And by doing that, um, you know if you, your paper is only this big, your flower's not gonna go off the edge. So that's why I like to begin that way. Just kind of set scale. Now, um, I'm gonna find the center of my flower, which is actually gonna be kind of up here here, the way that the, um, uh, kind of the way the flower's kind of opening from the center, the center's gonna be here. I'm gonna make this line a little bit darker, just so you can see it well. I'm working on white paper, so I'm afraid that if I don't draw dark, you're not gonna be able to see it. So this little center area, um, I'm just kind of drawing this curved petal here. And drawing a rose can be a little complex because you have so many um, little petals uh, coming around the middle. But if you think of it as you're kind of just seeing the tips of um, all these petals and they kind of curve over sometimes like that, that can make it a little bit less intimidating, I think. Um, another tip would be to actually just find a picture like online and trace it because that way you will, um, you will be able to really see the way the lines go instead of just trying to pick out the shape. Now here we've got the, um, the an area of the flower, we can see kind of the base of where the flowers are, come, the petals are coming out of the hip area. Um, it's just kind of one of those um, situations where you just kind of draw what you see, which that's kind of how I draw it anyway. But you basically have a bunch of compact petals kind of coming out from the center. And I like these overturned leaves because they, or petals, because they just kind of give you that lacy um, feminine flower look. Um, let's see, get the base of our flower down here. And I just kind of work my way around and just start adding petals. It gets easier once you get out of the center part because then you've got larger petals that you're putting in. And you just kind of tuck them in and around. And let's see, we've got another big one up here. And then here we have this overturned petal there that's going to kind of go in there. We got the bottom of our flower there. We got another petal kind of sneaking around here. Got one of these nice, really curly decorative front petals. Hopefully, you can make out what I'm drawing because um, 
I know my I usually don't have my my original circle in there so dark but I wanted you to you'd be able to see it but see you can see how everything pretty much does end up within the circle other than maybe like a a stray petal that's kind of coming out a little bit further. I actually feel like that one needs to be a little bit bigger. So then you can go in if you have an eraser, which gee, I don't know if I do. Oh, this one on the end of this pencil. You can go in and erase the lines you don't need. You really don't need to do this, but if it seems confusing, because my drawing might be a little confusing, I'm going to do that. And then um, you kind of have your stem. You have these little um, petals for the uh, they come off the hips kind of there for some rosebuds are kind of like a teardrop shape the flowers I don't have room for flowers in my uh, the petals of the leaves rather in my drawing but they kind of are oval with spiky they're kind of quite ovalish but you know again look for some photos I'm not gonna put leaves on mine but just in case you need that um, that reference but there you go. There's, you know, a drawing for you to work from if you need the help. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is draw, finish drawing this, and we're going to go ahead and paint the rose. I'm using a number six round. Um, that gives me a lot of control. I can get in all these little petals. What I'm going to do is take some of that crimson color with a little bit of the lemon yellow, and that's going to be pretty much a color I use on these flowers. And so on... Um, each of these petals, what I'm going to do is kind of add color where it's the darkest, which would be kind of where, like kind of the underneath area of a petal. And then I'm going to blot my brush, a little tissue here, just blot the brush. And then I'm going to drag the color around. And you may want to turn your paper. I like to turn my paper while I'm working just so I can get in there and reach what I need to reach. And then, if I rinse off my brush, I can pull it out even more. And get that really nice soft blend. And it's okay, it, you know, it should look like it's painted, so don't worry if you get some weird little clumps of color. Let the paint do what it wants to do. That's watercolor for you. It's gonna do what it wants to do, so you might as well just get used to the idea. And I just dropped a little bit in there because I felt like I just wanted a little bit of concentrated color in there. All right, I'll turn that right back around and do the same thing on another petal. I'm going to go right in here. I'm doing this little circular area there. Sometimes it's hard to explain how I draw something. I definitely had a hard time explaining it this time. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, if not, you know, find a picture online and, and trace it and you'll see what I mean about how the petals are kind of coming from this way in that. It's um, just one of those, one of those tough to explain things. All right, now if I want, I can just drop in a little bit of color just to give it that painterly look. And you can leave um, lighter areas. You can wipe out some areas just by blotting your brush and going over it. Because really, you want you want subtle color here. Do the keep doing this to all the petals. Just remember, wherever you have an overturned petal, you're going to have um, you're going to have shadow underneath it, or not even really shadow, but more intense color underneath it. For this case, you don't really we're not really going to be doing too much for shadows. We want this to be nice and fresh and light looking. You start getting grays and stuff in there. It's going to be very um, unrealistic and harsh looking because the petals are so translucent they kind of catch the light and glow almost so it's not it's not like you have something hard that's going to have a heavy shadow on it and the smaller petals are actually going to be quicker and you want to do less to them because you don't want them to seem overworked see on these upturned petals you just want the very uh, just a hint of color almost just what's left on the paper from our from where we toned it that's why we toned it so we wouldn't have these really weird white harsh areas well this is my first video of the day I've uh, I spent the morning uh, cleaning the office which just it's it's also our entryway so it gets trashed unlike any other room and and you know you just kind of become immune to it and it's like all right this uh, this is awful I found my kid's lunch money in there. I'm like, oh no, she lost her folder under a stack of junk 
basically the kids had uh, printed out. I think what they did was they had a computer malfunction. They started printing something and then it didn't go, so they kept hitting print. And then when um, the printer started going, there were like 50 copies of this thing that they had designed on this program called Tux Paint, which is like a, a graphic design program for kids. And um, it's actually really great. It's free if anyone wants to check it out. It's uh, t called Tux, T-U-X, Tux Paint. It's a, it's a great little uh, program for kids to you know kind of play with graphic design but anyway so i like these oh this whole stack of like just stuff that had printed and i can understand nobody wanted to waste it and throw it away but it was something that was just you know unusable you didn't need 50 copies of this it was oh yeah we needed it needed some intervention i'm gonna go around here on this last little group of petals and add some of this color and then pull it out with a little bit of damp brush. And because we're here at the outside of the flower, we might want to bring that color up a little bit more, uh, especially on this back petal here so that it really shows, so that you can differentiate differentiate it from the, um, the background. There we go. And then if you want to, if you feel like you want a little, you want to warm up some petals, like give it a little sunshine, sunshine on its shoulder you can really with a watery lemon yellow you can go in and just add a little bit of warmth here and there you don't want too much you don't want it to look like the flowers gone by just to warm it up a little bit so the reason we're not getting orange when we mix this red and yellow is because the yellow is lemon yellow which is closer to green than it is to red or to orange and the pink the red that we're using is closer to blue because it's more of a pink than it is to orange so that's why we don't we're not getting like a bright orange same thing with the buds over here i'm just using some of that red mix that we've been using the crimson plus the lemon just going to throw in some of the darks and then just drag it with a damp brush Gonna let that dry before I try to go in there with the green. Now, if you get too much color in there, I feel if it's a little too much, I can just blot it with a crinkled up tissue, and then you'll get kind of some kind of petally texture there too. All right, so we're gonna use some sap green and some lemon yellow separately, though. Mix up a puddle of sap green on your palette and a little puddle of lemon yellow, and then you want to wet the um, the other bud here, this one down here, because you want this to be very vivid and lively. It's a fresh new bud, so I'm gonna put some, some yellow in, nice and fresh. And then I'm gonna put the green in, and I'm gonna let those colors blend and mix together. And that's why, that's why it's gonna look fresh and lively as opposed to forced, because we have the, um, the color mixing. Now, let me see if I have a scrap of credit card here, because that's what I like to use to do my scraping. I'm doing the bottom bottom of my bucket. They always fall to the bottom. There we go. I'm going to scrape in the detail. See that? I just love using the little scrapey tool. It's very addictive. So it's basically just a cut up piece of credit card. Um, and then I'm going to go in and paint the stems and leaves underneath here. So because our flower should be dry by now because that's why we started on those outer petals for this for just this reason. So that would be dry for us. And um, I'm pretty much just using the sap green, but you know, pick up a little bit of yellow and put that in there too, just for a little bit of interest. And if you wanted your green darker and earthier, you could add a little bit of that crimson to it because they're opposites and they will make it darker. All right. Um, now, um, um, what I'm doing here, I'm putting my wrist against that because I want to see if it's cool or room temperature. It feels cool, so I know I need to dry that before I go on. I just keep my heat gun here. A hair dryer is fine for this, for drying your paper. Um, so that's a little trick. Feel your paper. If it feels cool to the touch, then it is still wet. And, um, and if you try to paint over it, you're going to get fuzzy edges or your paint's going to bleed together. So I'm just going to go in. Oh, why don't we paint this one dry just to see the little the difference. I'm going to just go in with my sap green, paint the, um, paint the little leafy things. Again, not a scientist. Don't know what they're really called. I'm going to call them leafy things. 
Anyone's got a problem with it? Well, you can report to the complaint department. <laughs> oh. There we go. I just, I like the combination of the hard and soft edges. So having a little bit of the hard green edge and a little bit of the nice bright yellow, I think that just kind of looks like watercolor because it, you know, it's fun, it's quick, it's um, easy breezy. And really, there you go. We just painted ourselves a rose. And um, if you want, you can go add more details to it. Something I love to do that not everybody does, so you don't have to do it. I like to spatter on some color. So what I do is I turn it so it's facing me because it's a little bit easier for me to control. And I just splatter. And you don't have to do this, as I said. Just because I just because it's just because I like it doesn't mean you have to do it. It's your artwork after all. And if you do get a little more paint than what you want, I want a looser splat there. If you do get a little more paint than what you want, let's go ahead and blot it up off the flower. I usually do blot it off my focal image. Um, you know, just for something. You can always go in and add more shadows if you want to, um, just by putting it, and I'll show you, I'll show you how to do that, just in case you decide you feel like you need a little bit more. Take a, you don't want very much paint, load up your brush and then dab it off and then you can go in <clears throat> and add very light and this is called glazing very light glazes and as long as you're gentle you shouldn't lift up the paint that's underneath okay and you can go in add a little more depth i feel like this just need a little bit more definition um but if you like a softer look then you know skip this step and sometimes you don't even need to blot off your brush because you just get a feel for how much you need and uh, that's just a very light adjustment. I think sometimes you feel like, well, it's watercolor, it's down, it's down, nothing I can do about it now. <clears throat> and while that's a lovely um, attitude, you know, hey, it's there, I'm not gonna worry about it, you can actually tweak it a little bit just by glazing and a very, very damp, very, very lightly damp brush. And so there, I feel like just that little extra definition was all it needed. Um, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I would appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe and share it on your Facebook, share it on your blog, share it on your Pinterest, pin it. I keep forgetting to mention Pinterest. Um, and hey, sharing is caring, right? Uh, thank you so much and subscribe and you won't miss any other tutorials because I got a lot of tutorials in a lot of different um, areas. If there's something you want to see, leave a comment. I will add it to my request list and hopefully get to it sometime in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.